okay let's combine them uh, so let's let's combine these so dm dx where uh, where let's say ue times dm dx is ue times integral uh, the, 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 is ue times d dx of what uh, d dx zero to infinity yeah, minus ui minus u thank you yeah. dy all right so let's try to combine these two ddx terms so to combine these two ddx terms uh, first we need to somehow take this ue into this x derivative so let's add something and subtract something so let's add let's do this ue times dm dx is equal to uh, ue times dm dx plus m times due dx subtract m due dx i'm just adding subtracting the same thing the purpose is these two terms now combines into a perfect derivative right so we get d dx of ue times m okay and this is good because now this additional term I get minus m times due dx it's something I it, it's it no longer involves derivatives of unknowns it only involves derivative of ue which in this in the boundary layer equation I consider as known so this uh, becomes now let me try to take this in again we use the we we now can replace uh, again we now here replace uh, ui by ue and uh, minus m times due dx so this is uh this is this term all right so this allows us to uh, yes. Are we interchangeably using U E and U I? Yes, in in the boundary in the boundary uh in the boundary layer U I U I uh is is equal to U E. That's right. The X component. X X component, right. And the, the curvature effect makes a small difference. And uh, if you have a pl flat plate, it is uh, it is to very high precision equal to UE. And if you have a curvature, you need to take the curvature effect into consideration. So UE is going to be for a uh, for a wall that budgets outside. UE is going to be increasing as sorry UI is going to be increasing as you approach the wall. If you have a, a concave wall, then UI would be decreasing as you go towards the wall. I mean, it's basically uh, Bernoulli's, right? So you you know, so you know, uh, in order to provide the curvature of the streamlines, you need the pressure gradient in the wall normal direction. And the pressure gradient, you put it into Bernoulli's equation, you know how the velocity is going to change. So for for a wall that is uh, uh, for a wall that is like like that. Okay, your pressure is higher at the wall than outside, so the velocity has to be. Uh, the, 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 the velocity has to yeah, the velocity has to be lower at the wall. So for a wall like this, the velocity has to be higher at the wall, right? That's all with uh, Invisit, right? Using Bernoulli. So that's the good thing about the UI. So okay, so now take the difference between them. I have a ddx of uh, okay, so now if I also replace this with UE, you can see I have a UE square here. I also have a UE square here, right? These two cancels. And the difference is now between U square and UE times U. And if you remember the definition of the momentum thickness of the boundary layer, that seems to be very intimately related. So let's do that. Let's perform the subtraction. 
and uh, what we get is d d x of the integral the, the, the u e squared term cancels and we have u e u minus u square d y is equal to is equal to first of all this term that comes out of uh, uh, m minus m times due dx and plus tau All right so good so now we have something interesting to look at so so basically the derivative of the momentum defect can be considered as two, uh, the, the combination of two effects. One effect is tau. If you have, if you have any wall shear stress, it is going to increase or decrease the, the momentum defect. It's going to increase the defect, making the boundary layer thicker. Right, and if you have due dx, a positive uh, uh, increase in the edge velocity, it is going to it is going to decrease the defect. Right, so that's a uh, that's the interpretation of this.